the No Water River and the fifth installment of the Spotlight on NCTE Poet series with Lee Bennett Hopkins. Today we are speaking about the fifth winner of the award, John Chardy, who won the NCTE Award for Excellence in Poetry for Children in 1982. Um, hi Lee, welcome back. Hello Renee, thank you. <laughs> uh, the thing that struck me about John Chardy, well I'm just going to jump right in, is that he was actually known as a poet for adults, yes. and his body of work for children is much uh, smaller than that of the other poets that we've discussed so far. Can you tell us a little bit about this transition that he did from adult poetry to children's poetry and his overall contribution to literature for children? Yes, you hit it right on the head. Uh, John's early adult years uh, were immersed in poetry, but mainly for adults, as you mentioned. He was an English professor. He worked at Harvard. He worked at uh, Rutgers in New Jersey. And he was the poetry editor of the magazine Saturday Review for over 16 years. He was the one who chose poems that would appear in that journal. Of course, they were all adult poems. He himself wrote scores of poems and countless essays and literary criticisms uh, regarding adult poetry and adult form. And he was also heralded as a, a genius for his translations of Dante's Inferno, uh, which most college students read, and that was, that was the edition that people read. Uh, it wasn't until 1959 that his first book, the reason for the pelican appeared. This was in 1959. The book that I'm holding was published in 1994, 35 years after it was published. This is an anniversary edition. Originally published by Lippincott, this was reissued by Wordsong, Boyd's Mills Press. And interestingly enough, it has an afterword by X.J. Kennedy, who, will go, who went on to become... Uh, an NCTE Poetry Award winner. The thing about John's work, long before the light burst of Shel Silverstein or Jack Polutsky, his work rang with nonsense and captivated young readers. In The Reason for the Pelican, again his first book, he created outlandish verses, reminiscent actually of Lewis Carroll or Edward Lear. Titles such as The Bugle Build Bazoo, The Sagan Sack, Lucifer Leverett Leitenberg. Just the titles seem like things that Shel Silverstein might have created, or again, uh, Edward Lear. He went on to write over a dozen, like 14 to 16 books of poems for children. So his work, you know, was very diverse, ranging from adult to moving into children's work but he also continued his whole life to write for adults. So would you say that he was the first to start with a light verse, let's say, in the, in the, in the mode of Lewis Carroll and Edward Lear? I, I wouldn't say he was the first. He was a pioneer in that work, uh, but John's, were, John's work were more of the silly, the more humorous but they were brilliantly constructed. He was a master of language. He was a very, very fine wordsmith, as most poets were. In, after a Pelican, in 1961, he did the book, I Met a Man. Uh, and this was his very favorite book. Of all the books he ever wrote, he always referred to this. And it's a collection of 31 poems. And he said to me, it's my favorite book because I wrote it on a first grade vocabulary level when my daughter was in kindergarten. I wanted it to be the first book she read through and she learned to read from it. Almost any child halfway through first grade should be able to read the first poems. So here we have an early I Can Read book long before the I Can Reads were established. He also told me in an interview he had no system of writing, none whatsoever. And I'll quote this, it's funny. He said, writing is like lazy fishing. 
drop a line, sit easy. If a fish bites, play it. If not, enjoy the weather, which is a wonderful quote. <laughs> Another one of his very big books, popular books was You Read to Me, I'll Read to You, uh, which was um, illustrated by Edward Gorey. And in this book appears one of his most popular and famous poems, which was Mummy Slept Late and Daddy Fixed Breakfast. Uh, back bef just when he won the award, there was a survey among hundreds of children, and this was picked as their favorite poem. And John always said, having children pick a poem like that was better than winning the Pulitzer Prize. <laughs> so he was very pleased uh, with the poem. And most readers would know what it. it's about a father. Can I read the poem? Actually, Lee, I was just going to ask you if you wouldn't mind reading a poem, because as you know, most of John Charty's books are out of print, as with most of the NCT award winners that we've already covered. So I'm having a hard time finding poems to share. So I'd love it if you could read this one for us. Yes, again, I'll read Mummy Slept Late and Daddy Fixed Breakfast, uh, which is, again, one of his most popular poems, and it does appear in several collections. But it is a wonderful verse. Daddy fixed the breakfast. He made us each a waffle. It looks like gravel pudding. It tasted something awful. Ha ha, he said, I'll try again. This time I'll get it right. But what I got was in between bituminous and anthracite. A little too well done? Oh well, I'll have to start all over. That time, what landed on my plate looked like a manhole cover. I tried to cut it with a fork. The fork gave off a spark. I tried a knife and twisted it into a question mark. I tried it with a hacksaw. I tried it with a torch. It didn't even make a dent. It didn't even scorch. The next time Dad gets breakfast, when Mommy's sleeping late, I think I'll skip the waffles. I'd sooner eat the plate. Thanks, Lee. Lee, uh, you had a funny quote from John uh, a little while ago, and I actually just read one that said, you don't have to suffer to be a poet. Adolescence is suffering enough for everyone, which I think probably most of us could agree with. Uh, do you have any other quotes uh, from John that you would like to share with us? Well, in all the interviews I did, I usually ended by asking the poet to define poetry for me. Uh, his, of course, was very succinct as he was, uh, but it says a lot in a few words. He said, poetry is where every line comes to rest against a white space. If we think about that, it's quite provocative and interesting. And again, Renee, I, I feel blessed to have met all these poets and particularly him. I met a man who was brilliant, he was kind, he was generous, uh, but most of all I met a man, a poet, a poet like no other. And I met a man. I met John Charty. Thank you, Lee, once again for sharing your memories of a wonderful poet. <laughs> and for you who are watching, we hope you'll come back for our next installment of the Spotlight on NCTE Poets, when we'll have Lillian Moore. Thanks a lot, and thank you, Lee. Bye-bye, Renee. Looking forward to next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>